Uh, good afternoon, everyone who's in Asia. Uh, good day, everyone everywhere else. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining uh, the Startup Body Demo Day online. Uh, we have a lot of people joining. Um, it's also the first time we have to do it this way. When we were planning this initially, I wasn't planning to have my team distributed as well. Um, so bear with us uh, if we have a few hiccups here and there in coordinating everything. Uh, my name is Robin Turlings. I'm the founder and CEO of the Startup Buddy. Uh, on the chat and on the screen, uh, you will see other team members of mine as well. So Shavri Sati uh, that you see waving at the moment, uh, she will be co-hosting this event. Um, we also have Darvis and Sakshi who will help you on the chat and with the Q&A. Uh, I'm only a man, so I'm not able to do that many tasks by myself. Uh, if you have any questions, please please just reach out to them and ask them whatever you want to know. So we are the Startup Buddy, and the Startup Buddy is an online fundraising and startup building platform based in Singapore. We now have uh, 1,500 companies uh, divided over 55 different countries where we have founders learning to build companies all the way from ID stage till series A or B. Um, since November, we also have an investor portal. And through that investor portal, uh, investors can keep track of the different users of our platform. And when they want, they can reach out to them. Uh, the founders are able to get in touch with the investors as well, and that way fundraise. Our goal as a company is to become a global startup building and equity trading platform. And what that means is we want to provide an onboarding platform uh, for founders that are new to the whole game, teach them how to become an entrepreneur, um, help them in the process and structure it. So we, for example, have a dashboard where you can keep track of what you're doing at the moment. And while you're using the platform, you're also creating data about the progress of your business. Now, this data you can share with the investors, which gives them a much more reliable insight in how you've been progressing over time. Time. Uh, another big advantage of our platform you will see today, um, you will be able to connect to startups that are also in more remote places where there's not a big startup community and where there's not a lot of events. So over time, a lot of founders and investors have been asking me all the time, who are on your platform? What type of companies? Um, well, we'll showcase five of them for you today. So all of them are real companies with real founders and with real products and services. Their pitch decks might not be as polished as you might have seen before. We didn't put them through a program for three months training them how to do the perfect pitch today, uh, but they will tell you real startup stories about how their experience has been, where they are at now, and what they plan to do in the future. The program for today looks like this. So we have just started. I'll keep my introduction as short as I can. Um, then we'll go to the pitch coaches who will introduce themselves and also as investors explain what they typically look for when they listen to a pitch. We'll have five different pitches today. And once the pitches are over, everybody who's attending can join in as well. Uh, you can join in at any moment uh, during this event. There should be a Q&A button here at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you have a question, please just send it there. Um, my team will keep track of it and will try to ask as many questions as possible. When you do ask a question through the Q&A, please address it to somebody. Uh, it can be either the investors that are uh, pitch coaching, it can also be the founders, but address it to somebody because we don't have time to ask a question to everybody who's here. Um, for the pitch coaches, I like to ask you to, when you want to ask a question during the pitches, so every startup has 10 minutes in total. Uh, during those 10 minutes, they will first tell about their company for about five to seven minutes. The remaining time is for Q&A, which we will only do with the pitch coaches that are live. When you have a question, please uh, raise your hand. There should be a function at the bottom where you can wave or raise your hand. And then Sharfri and myself know uh, that we should give you the floor. Like I said, we have a lot of uh, attendees, panelists, people from all over the world, quite literally. I think all continents are represented. Um, 
I do want to ask everybody to be a little bit patient with each other. We all come from different backgrounds, different cultures. Uh, not everybody might be very fluent in English. Um, so please respect each other and make sure that we have a good session uh, all together. Then we get to the part that everybody is probably be wondering about, who are the companies that are going to pitch today? So as I promised, we have a quite diverse field of uh, startups, also very different stages, also very different countries, also they're very different founders. I've had the pleasure to talk to all of them in the past two weeks. Uh, the first company up will be Rebate Mango, which comes from Thailand. Uh, then we have our home base player, uh, Talantora. Then we move on to Let It Wack, which is a social enterprise from India. Then we continue to Simple Jobs. Uh, Simple Jobs is a member of the incubator program at Temasek Polytechnic here in Singapore. And last but not least, we'll move to Build, uh, which is based in Ghana. Now, for the investors who are live, uh, I quickly want to show how you can look up more information about all these companies. Um, so, as I've told you, we have an online uh, platform for investors where all the profiles of these companies are available. If you already have a profile, simply log in and you probably already know where to look. Uh, if you don't have that, I'm sorry, I have quite a lot of issues today with my computer and the network as well. Um, so you go to sign up here, obviously. Okay, this loads very, very slowly. So, um, and you can, Join as an investor by clicking this button here in the middle. Um, I'll try to log in and in the meantime, while I'll do that, I actually want to first move to uh, introducing our pitch coaches for today. Um, and I'll first stop sharing my screen and then see if I can actually see everybody. Yes, whoa. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody. I didn't see you before because I was sharing my screen. So uh, I've, I just like to go in the order of the poster that we uh, had before. Uh, I like to start with uh, Kenrick. Um, Kenrick, uh, like myself, is Dutch. Uh, he will explain himself what he does and who he works for. Uh, Kenrick, can you kick it off by explaining a little bit uh, what you do in your day-to-day -day life, uh, who you work for? but also what you will find interesting this afternoon when you watch the pitches. Sure, uh, thanks Robin. Um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Kenrick. I'm the founding partner of, of Lunex Ventures and Lunex Ventures is a uh, dedicated fund that focuses exclusively on the blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, space. Um, so we're an affiliate basically or a spin out of Golden Gate Ventures, which is a traditional VC based in uh, in Singapore. Um, so we made a number of investments in this space, primarily in Singapore, but some, some outside of it. Um, so we're, we're hyper targeted on that kind of industry, but, um, I guess for, for pitches, like it doesn't really matter what the, the niche, the vertical or the industry is. They're all super interesting across the spectrum and they all have kind of the same characteristics in terms of like, what is a good pitch, right? Like what is the, uh, what is the chemistry that you have with a founder or like how do they convey basically your enthusiasm to you? That's kind of usually one of the things that I like the most is like you really need to feel that the founder is passionate about what he's building and why he's building it and the reasons behind uh, him starting this company. And yeah, hopefully I'll, we'll see some of that uh, this afternoon as well. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so, from you, I want to move to uh, Ina. Uh, what I forgot to mention about uh, Kenrick, um, we have so far twice organized an event called Tables Turned, uh, which is a pitch a competition very similar to how pitches are for startups, except that the investors pitch to the room and not the startups. <clears throat> Both uh, Ina and Kenrick were the winners of last year's edition. 
Um, so listen carefully when I give you feedback. Uh, so let's go to Ina, please. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Ina, I work for Cocoon Capital. We're an early stage uh, VC fund based here in Singapore, but we invest in the whole of Southeast Asia. So we invest early stage pre-revenue um, and we are looking for enterprise or B2B companies or deep tech companies. And what I like to look for in a pitch is to um, is to understand the problem statement. So really get to understand what problem you're solving and why you're solving it and how you're going to solve it. So that's, that's the main thing that I'll be looking for. So yeah, excited to be here today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So I don't have the banner here in front of me, uh, but let's go to Anirudh. I think you were next, next to Ina on the, on the banner. Uh, just a second, you're still muted. Right. Can you yep. hear me now? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. First of all, thanks a lot for inviting me for the event. Now, I work for a, the investing team for a deep tech focused fund called Speciale Invest. We invest in global companies which are making disruptive technologies. We typically focus on B2B companies at an early stage. We invest pre-revenue, post-revenue. We're pretty much agnostic. Uh, for the sectors that we invest in. We've done investments in aerospace, robotics, automation, uh, SaaS, enterprise softwares, and anything which is related to, uh, which has like a flavor of deep technology. Then uh, I think what I look for, or what we as a team look for in a team is I think super solid founders with a uh, super clear vision. That is I think of prime importance when you invest at a seed stage or an early stage. Then I think uh, the next could be probably Understanding of the industry and uh, deep knowledge about the sector that you guys are working on is something that we look for in the early stage companies that we back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, then we move on to Suleiman all the way in Jordan. I guess it's still a little bit early for you. Um, can you pre please introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Hi. How are you, everyone? Um, so Suleiman here. I Ventures. Uh, I mean, the leader leads it. We are the corporate venture capital arm of Arab Bank, uh, one of Nina's largest banks. Uh, we're present. My presence. We're present in. We're present in 26 countries. 90 years old bank. But as a VC, we're only two years old. We've done mostly fintech, but with a very broad definition of, of the mandate. So we were looking all at every solution that ranges between lending, payments, infrastructure, insure tech, prop tech. So anything and everything with regards to the future of money, uh, more pressing now with COVID, obviously. So um, we are early stage, but we do only post traction or post product launch at least. So to, to gain uh, a better understanding of the product market fit as, as the market really sees it rather than just the founders. When we look at pitches, on the other hand, uh, the main two elements that we look for are really to understand the product market fit in the first place. So if, and as Ina just mentioned, if this, um, if the product, if the solution has a proper uh, fit with what's required in the market, or at least is, is envisioning one, and more importantly, next to it is the business fundamentals that drive the business model. So basically the unit economics of, of, uh, of the solution, uh, as well as the, the interest that, that drive the growth of the business um, as a VC investable business, obviously. So we want to see if the founders understand these two elements very critically uh, and hopefully demonstrate them through traction. But even if the traction is too early, at least an understanding of these elements would uh, would signal in the pitch if, if this company is interesting or not. Okay. Thank you very much, Salama. Um, then the last pitch coach for today uh, is representing a venture capital firm uh, primarily in Hong Kong, I think, but he's also based here in Singapore. Uh, Aiden. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. So I'm representing Betatron. And, you know, as uh, Robin has said, we're a venture capital firm that's based in Hong Kong. Um, I'm based in Singapore, looking after the Southeast Asian and APEC region as well. Um, so we've been founded by five top VCs in Hong Kong who have 600 
million dollars of assets under management. So what's unique about Betatron is we invest up to $5,000 into these startups and have a special personalized tailored programs to get hands on together with these startups uh, for you know, business acceleration and growth, but also primarily towards their next round of fundraising. Um, the sort of startups that we look for are um, industry and geographically agnostic. Uh, we do lean towards a little bit more B2B companies, but primarily um, anyone who's really ready to scale. Um, so in terms of a pitch and what we look for, uh, well, I, I like to say it in very simple terms, the problem statement when you come and talk about what you're solving, be able to explain it like you're five so that anyone can really get that concept. Um, if it's technical, someone who's five years old can really understand that. Talk about the traction or the potential traction and how you're going to build this into a VC investable $100 million revenue company. All right. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. That's very clear. Um, so we're almost ready to go to the pitches, but I do still want to share for a second what I wasn't successfully able to share just a second ago. Um, so once you have uh, logged in as an investor on the startup buddy, you will find all the companies that will pitch today here. Uh, so Build is the one that will pitch last, Talentora. We actually have a lot more companies that uh, are fundraising right now through the Startup Buddy. Please check it out. Um, we're also very actively developing our platform. Uh, hopefully in two weeks from now, we'll be able to automatically uh, match your interests with the companies that we have in the Startup Buddy. So check it out. Uh, when you go into the profile of one of the companies, it will look something similar to this. So this is obviously our own profile, uh, where you, for example, find our team, et cetera, as well. <clears throat> if you want to get in touch with the startups, there is a button here that says add to my favorites. Uh, make sure to click it and we'll make sure that you get connected to, the, to that particular investor. Uh, sorry, startup. So with that, uh, we're going to the main part of the day. Uh, sorry, I have to stop sharing first. Uh, and we're going to our first pitch, um, which is going to be Jasper from Rebate Mango. He is based out of uh, Thailand. Um, he, him and I did our pitch drill already two weeks ago. It's a very interesting company. Um, one question I recommend asking is asking something about why loyalty points make so much money for the companies that give them out. Uh, I don't see him live yet. Let's see what I can do about that. Uh, I'm here. Do I need to share my screen? I, I don't. I don't think my face is that interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need some slides, though. Uh, no, please, uh, please uh, share your screen. Thank you. Okay. So the floor is mine. Yes, it is. Go ahead. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me just give you a brief introduction to Rebate Mango. Uh, our company was founded in May 2017 by myself and my co-founder Paul. Uh, we were working at Agoda at the time, uh, where I was heading the performance marketing team, and he was heading corporate partnerships. And what we were starting to see. Okay, let's see. Hang on one second. See if I can. Uh -huh, okay, we're back. What I was starting to see was basically there was a huge growth in loyalty platforms in Asia. Um, but at the same time, we found the offering that was there was limited. Uh, and by that, I mean that if you go to a bank and you want a credit card, they will generally have two types of credit cards for you. There will be the people who want the cashback credit card and there will be the people who want the miles credit card. And these are very, two very different segments. One, uh, some groups of people are very interested in one and some people are very interested in the other. Um, but the, the, what was available in the market was basically only covering cashback. So we decided to launch a platform where every time you go shopping, whenever you go shopping, wherever you go shopping, you can pick the rewards that's interesting to you. So if you, you know, live in Singapore and fly Singapore Airlines, then you might wanna earn some more Chris Flyer miles every time you shop online, which can double up with your credit card and so on and so forth. So every time you shop, you basically have the choice of what rewards that you, you would like to earn. Uh, now, how that is funded is basically the fact that we get a commission from every purchase and we distribute 
distribute part of that commission uh, in whatever currency that the user want back to them. And then we keep part of it as well as a transaction fee. Now we launched uh, the, the platform, the B2C platform first in Malaysia in June, 2017. Our launch partner at that time was Digi, which is the, the largest mobile operator in Malaysia. And this, as well as uh, another a number of extremely successful partnerships that followed have really uh, helped a lot. And that's testament to, to the network that my co-founder Paul really built up while we were at Agoda. So we've since launched in Singapore, Thailand, and the Philippines, and performance has been really strong, especially the second half of last year. Uh, it was really growing exponentially, so that by Q4, we were seeing uh, $4 million in transactions uh, through the platform for, for the quarter. So as mentioned, part of that success is due to our partner network. We provide wide label solutions for a lot of very big partners in this region, including banks, airlines, and telcos. And for loyalty currency owners, for instance, the airlines or Grab, um, we, we also have the currencies integrated directly in our own backend to present them on our platform, uh, which means that we have to work very, very closely with a lot of these companies. Um, that puts us in a very unique position at this point, because we have a platform that allows for multiple currencies. Uh, we've already integrated with key partners in this region, and at the same time, Companies in Southeast Asia are increasingly looking to capitalize more on these programs. Uh, I could mention, for instance, that in the U.S. at this point, last year, airlines made more money selling miles than they did flying airplanes. And everybody from Virgin Atlantic to American Airlines have their own shopping platforms. Uh, right now, we are in a quite unique position to provide that here as we're the only company that both have the market, the current integration and the technology, as well as relationships in place. So therefore, we just basically in Q1 this year launched our B2B solution for our partners, which basically allows them to make the offers that we normally have on our B2C platform available directly on their own platforms, be it their app, uh, their web, and so on. And then let their members shop directly and earn rewards directly with them. Meanwhile, we of course sit in the background, we, we process the transaction and we take a cut of that just like we do in the B2C business, but we are also able to charge implementation fees and monthly fees. So this has a huge impact on cash flow and revenue, basically from the model. At the same time, we own the data, which long term is extremely important. Uh, and in addition, any member who basically clicks any of our partner apps will also automatically be, be a member on our platform. So we'll create the user as soon as they click the first link. And that means that instead of spending like crazy on user acquisition, uh, which is where many startups go to die, uh, we basically get paid to undertake that. So the first deals are already basically in process and about to be signed. Uh, these will both be six figure deals for us, which means that it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll help a lot in these uh, slightly crazy times. Uh, it also gives us access to a combined member base of uh, 35 million members uh, between Upgrade and Asia Big, which will be the, the two partners. So Upgrade is more or less signed now and Asia Big uh, will be by the end of Q2. And so going forward, we have a lot more of these deals coming. We're already working with these companies. They already have white label solutions for us. And so basically our white label solution basically serves as the beginning of the funnel that leads to deeper and deeper integration where we run the backend um, loyalty part uh, and of making these offers available to the companies and enable them to get more, as many of their miles into the system and selling as many miles as they possibly can. Um, we will be allowing them to do that with online offers and in the coming months and quarters also with offline offers. So it could also, for instance, be in, in supermarkets and uh, you know, gas stations and so on. That roadmap looks a bit like this. So we just launched uh, the, the B2B uh, API in, in Q1. Uh, we were going to launch offline in Q2. Um, obviously, launching anything uh, offline retail right now is, is, is rather bad timing so we have postponed that so we have the technology ready but we will be uh, you know we will be launching it when things get back to a little bit more, more normal which we expect will be by q4 and by then that'll basically allow for both for gather, data gathering but also for transaction and earnings on both our platforms and our partner platforms both online and offline so to continue growing, we basically have a very experienced team behind us. There's myself, who is about 15 years of experience in digital marketing and affiliate products, uh, running the marketing side of the business. 
And then there's my two co-founders, Paul and Eric, who has basically a background in, in loyalty programs and been running it from both a uh, business development as well as an IT side uh, in, in Singapore for many, many years. Um, so it's, it's a quite a strong team um, that, 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 that I have a lot of faith in. Now, since our inception, we've so far attracted $1.8 million in investments. Uh, we are currently looking, we were looking to raise a, a $3 million Series A. We might be splitting that up to do $1 million of, of rich financing and raise the remaining $2 million by the end of the year. We're looking at that at the moment. Uh, the proceeds will go to further develop our product and to really capture and integrate uh, these regional loyalty programs which we're partnering with and which we stand to basically create a unique position with. We want to get as deeply integrated with them and then with us that is very hard for them to walk away at which point we can either continue to basically add services and fees to them or we become a very attractive takeover target. Okay, I believe that's my time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jesper. Um, we have a few minutes left for your Q&A. Who likes to be the first one to ask a question? I'm not sure if I can see all the, all the just a second. By the way, let's not do the raise hand thing. Just uh, unmute yourself and ask a question, please. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a question, not feedback, right? Just so that I understand. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, okay. So can you just take me through um, the acquisition of a B2B partner um, that you're now doing? Like how, what exact, how exactly that happens? Yeah, so so these be, so basically these are current B2C partners. So we're already running white label solutions. Uh, so they already have portals with us where they can send people uh, on a B2C basis, which means that they will be landing on the Rebate Mango site slash Maybank or slash Chris Flyer, where they have their own branded portal where they're currently sending the, the members. So that's basically step one, especially for airlines, because that means that we also have to integrate directly with the currency. Um, what we're telling them now is the next step is then that instead of having to send anybody to our app or to our website, uh, we can make all of these things available directly on their platform. So if you have the Chris Flyer app, you will be able to, you know, shop, go shopping with Lazada or Agoda or Expedia, or whatever you want to buy and earn uh, Chris Flyer miles directly on their app. So it's basically a natural progression where they move things to everybody wants a super app these days. Um, so, so basically, it's a natural progression where they basically get to integrate uh, and make more things available easily uh, directly to the members. It's a question of convenience as well, of course. Okay, we have time for one more question right now. So, uh, just wanted to ask, uh, what do you think would happen to the travel industry post-COVID and how do you think things changing after uh, this period of time? Because I think the travel industry in general or any luxury uh, expenditure would be very different from what used to happen in a world uh, pre-COVID. So how do you think you guys will uh, need to re-strategize on what you guys are targeting? Uh, okay, that, that, that's a very big question. Uh, <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to give you a quick uh, per perspective from my end. Uh, I mean, for on the, 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 there's, a, there's a number of things in this, right? First of all is, of course, will there be any airlines left for us to work with or are they all, all dying? Um, we basically work with the, with primarily with national airlines uh, in any given market. The most popular thing to earn, if, except for cashback, would always be you know the the, the miles of, of the national carrier, and the national carriers are not uh, going anywhere or going away. What they are doing, however, is realizing that they need to have as much many revenue sources as possible. Um, so for them, there's sort of a more urgency in in getting ways to make more money. Uh, which is basically what we are offering them an auxiliary revenue source. Um, so that's just for the airlines in, in particular. For, for travel overall, uh, it depends very much on how we're getting out of this. Um, if it continues to be a lingering problem with traveling, then obviously it's going to be a much slower start than if, if there's a security coming. I'm, a lot of people are talking about a boom, but I don't think we're going to see it. I think it's going to be a very gradual sort of returning to normal. 
Great. But I think it is, I think a lot of the revenue is, is definitely coming back. That being said, we are not dependent on travel because what, right now when there's no travel, we are just doing more of, uh, you know, supermarkets and we're doing more of, you know, whatever people are buying at home. Uh, there was a boom in, in people buying laptops for homeschooling and desks, desks for, for their new home office in Singapore in the last few weeks because everybody all of a sudden needed to sit at home and work. Um, so, so we're not as such dependent on, on the travel segment, um, but of course we look forward to having it back nonetheless. Okay, thank you very much, Jesper. Uh, you're correct, I'm one of those people who's still waiting for a chair. Um, <laughs> With that, uh, I'd like to move to the next pitch, which is uh, Sylvester Pillai. He's representing Talentora. Uh, Sylvester, you can take it away. Hi, hi guys. Um, how are you doing? Hope everyone's well. Um, so my name is Sylvester. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Talentora. So let me share my screen, yeah? Yep. Can everyone see this? <clears throat> Not yet. Can everyone see my, uh, my, my deck? Uh, not yet. Oh, I think uh, how about now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. So Talentora was founded in uh, 2017 by myself. Hang on. And it's basically a mobile app that connects talents with talent seekers in the media and entertainment space. So this uh, passion of mine actually came out through uh, a personal experience. So I started out as an actor back in, uh, two, uh, in, in the early 2000s. Um, so I was an actor after uh, serving my national service in Singapore, where I served two years in the, in the Singapore army, after which I began teaching drama, English and theater to uh, children and teenagers. And I went for my first audition in uh, MediaCorp, which is the national media company in Singapore. So from there, I became an actor over the next uh, number of years, and I found a really interesting challenge whereby sometimes, uh, because this is my bread and butter, it's my income, and I get some jobs on certain months, but I do not get jobs on uh, the other months. So it's a little bit tough, and I was not alone. A lot of people uh, were going through the same situation that I was. And so I created a company, a theater company, uh, for the next five years, and I wrote my own scripts, I, I produced my own shows, I sold it to uh, the armed forces, corporate companies, and all that, and that was really successful. Uh, and it was acquired by a bigger company, which I had the uh, uh, good fortune to, to be able to sell the company at that point of time. And after which I was beginning to think about how I could help uh, lots more people, and that's where technology came into play. So with technology, you can uh, scale, and so I started casting DB, which was like a LinkedIn for actors, singers, and dancers. Um, but people really preferred something mobile and something really more efficient. And that's why we pivoted casting DB uh, to Talentora. So we launched Talentora in 2017. And this uh, product allows talents and talent seekers to join. So there are two phases to this. Uh, talent seekers can actually provide the jobs and look at talents and talents can apply to those jobs. And with video, it, it, it cuts time and it saves effort and it saves money. Um, so let me tell you what happens in industry. Um, for example, a film company or an event uh, holds an audition or casting in a venue. People have to queue for a long time and go in front of the uh, auditioners and audition and perform and then they get the result maybe one week or two weeks later. So that's a lot of effort, a lot of time, but with our product, it offers a solution that saves all that and helps them more efficiently. So our plan of uh, scale and user acquisition is about Asia. So we plan to scale uh, in India this year and next, and as well as Indonesia, uh, um, uh, Philippines, and Thailand, besides Singapore and Malaysia, which we are already in. I'll talk more about uh, marketing later on. So we want to achieve a user base of 5 million within the next three to four years. So we raised about $450,000 out of our $750,000 goal. So we have about 25,000 users. Uh, we have uh, B2B partners and we have lots and lots of uh, matches that has happened since then. So this proves that it's validated and it's a need. And with funding, it's adding uh, fuel to the fire, which we need to accelerate and, and extrapolate on this. 
so what we want to achieve is a five million users in, in the three, four years and IPO the company. So the way we make money currently, I'll go back to this. The way we make money currently is a B2B uh, play whereby companies like MediaCorp or production companies come to us. They email us the number of talents that they need. They do not use the app, but they email us a uh, number of talents that they need. We look at the app and we shortlist the, the profiles for them, send it to them for a fee. So between five to 50 talents for about 200 to $2,000 uh, on a project basis. So that's, that has been happening for the past eight months. And we've been running a run rate of about $4,000 to $5,000 a month. Uh, interestingly, in June, we will begin uh, the C2C side, which is a, a subscription per year, where we charge $12 um, upfront uh, after a two week of a free trial. So when you download the app uh, for a consumer, you get two weeks free, and then you have to pay $12 to be able to post and apply for jobs, uh, chat with someone, as well as look at the CVs of a talent. So we have built a lot of data points and, and technology where we can make a lot of things more efficient. So when a talent seeker posts a job, they immediately get a short, list, uh, a short list of talents that are applicable to that job and lots, lots of many other features that we have. We also have product roadmap down the line and one of which is mentorship. So think of uh, something like Masterclass where we have veterans in industry and they come on board our app and uh, novice, act, uh, novice talents who are singers or dancers or actors who need advice can actually click on them, pay a fee and get advice from them through video. And we get a 20% uh, commission out of that and the mentors keep 80% of that. So that's in the works. We also have something really fun, which is uh, really engaging and brings lots of um, talents to the platform. So one of which is we have a uh, offline to online competition mode where uh, we run competitions daily. For example, Magic Monday, Magicians post the videos, Tuesday is Dance of Tuesday. And then the more likes that they get, the more friends that they invite to the platform, the more likes they get uh, and get ranked in the top three videos for the day, will be awarded a bunch of stars, which um, of which they accumulate 5,000 stars and they can cash it out for five bucks. So that's uh, in the works as well. So for this year, we, we, we target to spend about $400,000 and if we can achieve um, acquiring 200,000 users and convert 30% of them, that will bring us a revenue uh, about 700,000. And so that's what, why we need money for. Uh, one of the ways that we spend the money, for, if we raise the, uh, the, the remaining amount, which is 300,000, is that we will do a little bit of acquisition as well as upkeep our monthly burn. So in terms of acquisition, we have partnered with influencers, we have partnered with um, uh, companies like dance studios, uh, uh, potential pageants and schools where we do a revenue share with them. So for every user that they bring us to our platform, we pay them a dollar. And so in the lifetime value of a user, which is $12 uh, per, per year, we, we pay a dollar for the acquisition of that user. I think that is really fair and that is uh, what we are trying to do to achieve. So top management includes myself, our chief marketing officer, Shiwei, uh, Vignesh is, is our uh, CFO. And we have a bunch of advisors and investors, including MediaCorp, who invested in us in uh, 2017. So our investors and advisors come from a uh, bunch of various backgrounds. Uh, they help us with business development. They help us with strategies. Uh, they help us with fundraising as well. And uh, also a political, uh, so we have uh, a couple of political advisors who can actually cut the rate takes, for example, in India, when we go into India and scale, there are lots of challenges that we are going to face. So these guys will really help with us. And so we have um, three working uh, Singaporeans in Singapore, and we have four engineers in uh, uh, Bali who are full-time with us. So I think that's my time. Uh, I'm Sylvester, founder and CEO of Talent Torah, and I'm open for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sylvester. Uh, we're a little bit over time already, so we have time for only two questions. Uh, which of the pitch coaches uh, can I give the floor? Sure, I'll, 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 go I'll give. I'll give it a go. Oh, oh sorry. I'll, I'll go ahead first. <laughs> Let's go to for Aiden um, first, and then oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe just um, like. On, on the platform itself, like it wasn't entirely clear to me, is this more for kind of short-term gig kind of jobs or is this also more for long-term 
type of jobs. Okay. This, this was one of them. And the other one is um, what you say you go then B to C, but what is, what is that C and what do you charge or why do you only charge $12 a year and what do you charge that for basically? So those questions I have. Sure. Uh, so these uh, jobs are provided for talents and talent seekers uh, uh, in the media industry. And these are one of uh, jobs which actually happen constantly. So for example, um, if I'm a talent and Robin's a talent seeker and we start working on a project, um, that's, that's, uh, that's probably a project for one week and it's done. Maybe it's a film or a commercial ad that uh, I, I, w- I want to be a talent for. And, and then I get paid and that, that's done. But if the working relationship is good, uh, we keep in contact and I get more jobs, uh, repeat jobs from him. So these are jobs like uh, commercials, TV ads, film, uh, events, road shows. So all these jobs are happening daily. For, for example, in Singapore, there are about 300 uh, casting calls out there per day. So that's a lot of jobs in a month uh, in Singapore alone. So when we talk about B2B, it's that, it's that companies who need talents come to us and we charge a service fee with them. So that's just the B2B side of it. But when we talk about um, B2C, sorry, I would rather say C2C. So that's when talent seekers po- uh, use the app and they post the jobs themselves and the talents apply for the jobs. So both talent and talent seeker pay the $12 per year. We do not take anything out of that. We provide the platform and that's the service fee for the platform. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, as, as a quick feedback on that, I would say um, if the service is valuable, you should charge a lot more for that or otherwise not charge anything at all uh, and basically get more users on board. But that's just my initial kind of thought. Yes, uh, our advisors have told us that uh, as well. But what we like to do is uh, charge a low fee uh, for uh, so, Pastor, nobody, nobody can hear you. I just want to give uh, Aiden a second to ask his question, and you can briefly answer that, and then we continue to the next startup. Uh, so, Aiden? Okay. Okay. So, so very, very interestingly and quickly, um, you mentioned that um, the B2B side of things, no one uses the app, and they come by and email you. That sounds like a very critical part of it, and especially because the B2B are going to be bigger paying customers. What's What's your plan to go tackle that and, 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 and double down on this. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. So um, a lot, uh, we have about 20% of talent seekers on the app and the rest of them are, uh, 80% of them are talents. Uh, what we have successfully done is uh, con- con- convince talent seekers to join the app. So they are directors, um, casting agents, producers, uh, and, and writers. So a lot of them have joined, but they are still uh, some of them out there who are a little bit lazy to join the plat- uh, to join the app because it's just another app. Uh, they have so many apps uh, like music apps and all that. They, they may not need another app on their phone. But what we are trying to do is convince them that uh, if you can post it on the app itself, uh, you get lots more hits on it and you can manage your talents on your own. So that's what we are trying to do. Uh, and it's, uh, there's a slow conversion from those uh, coming to us by email and we are trying to convert them to go on the app uh, as, as we speak. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Sylvester. Um, with that, we're going to the next company. Uh, it's Let It Wack. Uh, Josh Shet, uh will pitch that. Uh, Josh, the floor is yours. Okay. Thanks, Robin. Uh, am I audible? Uh, you're not yet visible. Yeah, you should be able to share your screen now. Wait. Can you see my screen? A uh, few seconds. No, not yet. Okay, can you see now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Robin. Hey guys, good evening. Um, I'm Yash, the founder of Let It Wag. So let's now talk a little bit about animals. So I'll quickly brief you about my story, uh, what made me start this. Um, since my childhood, uh, you know, me and my friends, we have been adopting strays. Uh, till date, we have adopted around seven strays, uh, stray dogs, to be precise, and we should take care of them. Uh, so 24 months back, uh, you know, I was just trying to save a stray dog. And uh, I could, uh, I realized that the existing process 
of uh, you know saving any animal was very tedious this kind of you know made me think of uh, building a real time solution to help animals so you know that that's kind of you know the idea of uh, uh, the problem so here's the problem so the, the, the problem is that there's no common platform for stakeholders like vets ngos animal lovers service providers pet shops etc to connect with each other in real time under one platform so this is basically the shortcomings of current solutions currently people use social media platforms like facebook and uh, apps like whatsapp we chat you know to talk with each other and solve problems uh, the biggest challenge becomes you know uh, to communicate seamlessly using these uh, existing platforms um so i'll quickly kind of you know jump to what what is related to act and what sets us apart so you know we see related to act as uh, you know we want to empower individuals and organize uh, organizations with a tool in their smartphone to kind of you know collaborate and rescue animals in need and also help professionals and pet parents to take care of animals close and far uh, this is the impact so far it's been close to 18 months since uh, we have started working on the idea and we have helped close to 4000 animals and birds across the country across india 32 animals have got permanent home uh, we have not spent a single dollar uh, for marketing but in the entire 12000 downloads we have got is via word of mouth uh, till date somewhere around 10000 cases have been created on the app and um, people have uh, raised uh, ina 2 lakhs which is approximately usd 3 and 3000 uh, via the app for various animal causes i mean since since uh, the past 18 months we have people across the world uh, writing me writing to us uh, to use the app over there because this is actually the need of the hour and uh, this the, the problem exists everywhere um so this is the team uh, so this is me uh, so i believe that you know we, we as a team are very strong and you know which where you know we complement each other's strength and weaknesses so i have an experience of uh, running a startup before this i have also worked closely with accelerators incubators investors and a bank very closely um, so this experience has helped me to gain good knowledge in terms of you know how to run a company and uh, how to kind of you know connect with various stakeholders so rahul pandey is the cto uh, again he is a senior developer and has an experience of coding more than 11 years he has been working on uh, various new technologies and uh, he has worked on um, some big apps like hangama uh, hangama tata sky i mean these are quite a good apps in in india nishant who heads the marketing for us so he is a food and travel blogger uh, he is an instagram influencer he has worked with uh, production houses on rea- on of reality shows in india so he gets a good connect of celebrities and influencers on board so this is what success road map which i would see uh, we start with as a re- animal rescue app we are building a community so that's two, that two parts are being sorted now we are building ancillary services and just listing them down on the app post that we'll start uh, milking the cows and you know we'll start charging uh, people uh, small amounts for using our services uh, which then afterwards would turn into ecom so currently what the app does the app helps in uh, real time rescue the app helps in connecting with various stakeholders uh, within within the app the app helps in adoption the help the app helps to connect with vets ngos and there's a directory of all the other let's talk about the market a study shows nowadays that uh, young people prefer to have dogs or cats than a child till the time they settle the new generation of pet owners uh, kind of you know, treat their pets as uh, their own child which this because of this uh, feeling you know people don't people are more uh, keen on spending on their pets just like as their own child uh nowadays pet parents are pretty much concerned for their hygiene for the health of the pets uh, right from vaccination to you know grooming to food to ex- entertainment etc so this kind of you know opens the market for uh, all the stakeholders and players 
so you know if you talk about the market it's it's a 800 million dollar market in india uh, according to india international pet trade fair um which is growing at a double digit rate there are officially there are approximately 19 million per, per, pet parents in india unofficially there would be much more uh, on an average 6000 pets are adopted uh, in india and there are close to 30000 30 million uh, trees in india um so this talks uh, basically more about the market uh, if you have to segment the market uh, if you have to kind of you know uh, segment the pet industry on the type majorly uh, the the major comprises of dogs then comes cat then fish birds and the others uh, when we talk about the product outlook the major category would be pet food veterinary care over the counter supplies pet grooming and uh, boarding and live animal purchase which we wouldn't want we don't want to get into that so this is just a screenshot of you know how the app looks like it's it's pretty um, simple user friendly clean ui ux so this is a funding requirement uh, major of our funds would be uh, used in building a team and uh, to kind of you know maintain the product the second major spending would be in marketing which would in majorly include online marketing followed by it infrastructure uh, to kind of you know maintain the uh, server so typically we are looking at uh, 250k to 500k uh, and the funds would be used to increase the user base by 50x and launch the app globally so now the question comes how do we how would we make money um, you know in, in the, the pet industry being a very niche industry uh the major cost for any player is the acquisition cost of the customers so over here i feel we would have an advantage over this because uh, you know since uh, the app users would have a sense of ownership uh, towards the cause uh, they would have trust and loyalty towards the platform and towards the brand so a uh, community a community driven marketplace and ecom uh, is is could be a major uh, source of revenue crowd funding again is 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 a good uh, source of revenue for us because i have seen that people uh, do try and raise money um, the ticket size is small but you know people do try and raise money for various causes like you know they want to feed the animals they want to transport the animals they want to treat the animals they want to get operated so there are people who look for money and there are people who are even ready to donate some money uh the third type would be a subscription box which is kind of you know pretty hit in um, india uh, and in, countries in the west uh the fourth is events listing out events and even conducting events help would help us to kind of you know make some money uh this is some you know customer testimonial that we had Okay, so I can. Hello. So, can you make your last remark, and then we go to the questions, please? Josh, still there? Yeah, yeah, I am there. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, so basically your time is up so so end of your story and then we go to one question sure okay then i guess that what is was it um so for the pitch coaches uh who likes to ask a question about let it wag uh maybe sulaiman Um, no, actually, no. I mean, we're good with. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if there's no I, question. I guess I guess I have a question then. Um, can you you just do you have any source of revenue right now, or is it all there's no revenue at this point in time? See, at this point of time, we are. I mean, there's no revenue as such, but we have started, uh, you know, charging brands. So there are three brands whom, uh, you know, we have charged them to do, uh, do sell, help, uh, sell their products and services. 
uh, for instance there was one brand who uh, sells uh, pet uh, uh, this paw balms there are paw balms and paw oils for animals so we have kind of you know we we kind of you know uh, make a, a campaign for them and we executed via social media channels and our app and the guy has managed to sell some products worth uh, i know 20000 that is you know uh, 5 600 i mean we have charged them uh, somewhere around uh, uh, 15 50 is what we have charged them uh, as as a one time activity and i mean still exploring the revenue streams okay uh josh thank you very much yeah. um then now we move on to timothy from simple jobs hi can you hear me yes we can and we can now see your screen as well okay is this good uh now it is okay Hi, uh, my name is Timothy. I'm the co-founder of Simple Jobs. We are going to change the way hires engage the right part-timers for short-term ad hoc jobs by reinventing the job engagement process. Now, this might be how a typical job engagement process might look like right now. Uh, your boss will task you to look for part-timers for a weekend job. You go online, you post a job, and you get a bunch of people who apply for your job. You shortlist some of them that you think are good, but honestly, you wouldn't really know. You add them to a group chat to talk tell them more about the job and you take their attendance when they come to work but some of them don't even show up for work. Back at the office you compile their uh, time and then you pay them off in cash. Now you realize that you spend so much time during, throughout the whole process just for a short weekend job. Wouldn't it be better if there's a faster and more reliable way to engage such part-timers? Now this is where simple jobs come in. With Simple Jobs, we have all the tools for hirers all in one convenient place. As a hirer, you can easily post a job within one minute. You get a chat with all the jobbers that apply for your job to tell them more about a job or to discuss anything pertaining to the job without revealing your personal information. You get to take the attendance with a built-in attendance system using our QR code system. And the beautiful thing is at the end of the entire job, there's nothing else for you to do other than submit and pay. And with the automated fee deposits, everyone gets paid. So this means that it is a paperless and seamless work process, freeing up your time to focus on more important things you need to do. As a jobber, you now get to choose whom to work for and when you want to work by looking at all the bite-sized jobs available in the platform. We gamify the whole process, so we record each and every work hour you've done as a jobber on the platform. Now this translates to work experience and this translates to a higher level that will tag onto you, which means you get paid more for the job. Now this definitely works well for the part-timer, but it also works well for the hirer because now as a hirer, if I have a bigger budget, I want to engage effectively and efficiently. I want to know who has the experience to do my job. Now, because of the whole gamifying, we also included achievements and rewards to encourage professional behavior for the part-timers. Now in Singapore, there's about 230,000 part-timers in the workforce. That amounts to about $2 billion spent on part-timers alone. We take up to 20% commission for each job, which equates to about $86 million if we are able to capture 20% of the Singapore market. And to encourage hirers to post jobs on Simple Jobs right now, it's currently free to post any job. Now we started early last year uh, as a soft launch. And with the help of Tomasic Poly, we did a little bit of recruitment and we garnered over 650 jobbers who are interested to try our platform. In that time, we have also spoken to a few hirers uh, who are willing to try out this new way of engaging casual labor. Currently, we are also in talks with some manpower agencies to inject about 100 over job postings on Simple Jobs. Now, from the second half of last year, we did a bit of trial and we managed to clock about 400 work hours on Simple Jobs platform itself. There's about 73 unique uh, jobbers who work on our platform and about 33 jobs that was posted. So out of these 33 jobs, most of them were repeat customers. 
The team consists of myself. Uh, I have a background in business and information systems. I have worked in F&B events and operations related work for the better half of uh, almost 10 years. And I've been on both sides of the, of the fence. I've been a jobber and I've also been a hirer managing part-timers. My partner, Paul, he has worked in McDonald's for almost 10 years as a part raising through the ranks as a cashier all the way to a manager managing multiple uh, McDonald's outlets. He is also ACTA certified and he is the person who's going to set the standards for what jobbers uh, should behave, how they should behave. Now, we have the app in place. We have the people to drive this forward. We are looking for an investor who believes in what we are doing believes that this is a future of part-time job engagement and see the potential and where we're trying to achieve. We need your investment to go fast. We want to scale the team, further develop the product, do a bit of marketing push that will bring us the first 10,000 jobs on simple jobs within the first 24 months. Half of the money that is, is going to be spent on development, uh, new features, the product team to build a solid team and foundation for us to scale and propel to in the future. 40% of it will go to sales marketing, such as customer service, advertisements, and support. The remaining amount will be for other administrative fees and contingency. We are going to change the way people think about part-time job engagement. I promise you, simple jobs will become the norm. We have a team, there's a pain, and we have a beautiful product and a solution to bring value. So if you'd like to be part of this disruption, if you'd like to bring a better way for sim people to, uh, for hires to manage part-timers for simple jobs, please talk to us after this. Uh, if you like, uh, the app is available on the Play Store and you can download and try it out, uh, try this out now. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Timothy. Uh, the cool thing about my job is that I get to see the pictures twice and sometimes they remain sort of the same. And Timothy's is totally different, but I thought really good. Uh, with that plug, uh, what are the questions? Um, thanks, Timothy. Like, first of all, like great pitch. Like this was very clear in terms of what you're doing. You have great visuals, so I think the pitch is is great. Like I don't know what it was before, but it's definitely good <laughs> now. I um, won't know. <laughs> So like, I, I don't know the, the job tech market very well, but I, I know that marketplaces are tra tradition. This is basically a marketplace, right? And those are traditionally yep. very hard to, to build up. So I think you need to, to grow much faster than what you had in your kind of uh, projections. Yep. Um, how, how would you do that? So say you raise a bunch of money now, how would you, what would you do to build that two-sided marketplace? uh if you if you raise that money and grow say 10 you have if you had to grow like 10 times faster than you are growing uh mm -hmm. today so we are in a very unique position right now because uh we are incubating at tomasic poly and through the past few months i've been in contact with the rest of the polys and the good thing about singapore is that there's a there's a good network between this you know, tertiary institutes and they all are actually open for us to do uh, recruitment to, to work with them to do recruitment uh, not only that, I've actually not done any online uh, advertisements at this point in time. Uh, and that is actually a very good avenue to get uh, people within 16 to 25 years old. Uh, these are the people who actually have a lot of free time. They're still schooling. They have, uh, um, their, their, their calendars are quite, quite flexible. And that's what we are targeting to do. For the hires point of view, uh, I think it goes back to, uh, as a marketplace, it's a, supply, uh, it's a chicken and egg situation. If I have one side of the market, uh, it's easier to attract the other side of the market as well. So hirers will naturally come on board. When I first started, there are some challenges trying to get people to test us out because, um, again, chicken and egg situation where I don't have enough part-timers, the hirers are not willing to come on board. So if I can solve one end of the problem, I think the other end will come uh, slightly more natural. I hope that answers the question. Um, can I ask, are you focusing on any specific verticals? Because I mean, there's very, there's a huge difference between what type of part-time jobs you can do, right? So, yeah. So right now we are focusing on the mice industry uh, and it's a, really for businesses. So mice, um, F&B, uh, uh, events, uh, stuff like that. So that's that blue collar casual works is where we're focusing right now because it is the one that takes up a lot of time to get people on board. 
And also in the industry, a lot of people come and go all the time. So that's the reason why a service like this is actually going to help uh, get people on board and make it easier for them to hire people. Okay. Yep. And how um, much exactly are you raising? Sorry. Sorry? How much exactly are you raising? You uh, didn't are, mention the number. Yeah. Uh, so we are looking at about 500K. Uh, and I have a whole uh, two-year plan mapped out, so this is what we are looking to raise. Yep, so, so just that, that was my question as well, just to add on, you know, just some, some feedback mm -hmm. from that side, you know, 500K for the amount of traction that you're posting, um, definitely you would have to then increase over that. And of course, there, I'm sure you've done your market research, uh, Fast Jobs is likely going to be your biggest competitor over here, very highly funded. Uh, you talked about a way to tackle them, but do you really have a plan to come and, and, and win it from them or do you want to completely differentiate? Uh, so fast jobs at this moment is not the way we are operating things. Fast jobs is at this moment, the way I see it is very, pretty much a billboard. You don't need to create a resume. You just need a name and a number. You can sign on online and you walk to the closest uh, outlet because you can search based on distance. But what we're not, we're not doing that. We're doing more towards uh, like grab, but for jobs. So the tools are all in place for the hirer and you just need them for a short term basis. Uh, you don't need them to come for an interview. You can hire people who you know are experienced based on the platform and the information that we, we provide. You know their experience, there's no need to interview, there's no need to try your luck. You just post a job and you get to choose whoever you want their experience and they come down and work for you. So the tools are there compared to fast jobs where it's more like a billboard. So we are, in a similar space, we are looking at blue collar workers, but at the same time, the, the solution is slightly different. Thank you. We have time for one more question. No, okay. Uh, then we continue for now to the last pitch. Uh, that will be Edward. Uh, Edward just woke up. Uh, he's probably furthest away almost <clears throat> and he will be pitching um, build for us hey, Edward yeah we see you Hello, everyone, and welcome to Africa virtually my name is Edward and I'm the co-founder and CEO of build today it's my pleasure to welcome you to the unsung champions of Africa. And these are the over 40 million small businesses upon whose shoulders the economy of Africa thrives. In my country, Ghana, for instance, they account for over 90% of all businesses, provide over 80% of our jobs, and they contribute to up to 70% of our GDP. However, they often fall into trouble and they fail. 82% of the time when they fail is because of poor cash flow management. And also over 70% of them in the recent research in Ghana did complain about lack of access to growth, lack of access to credit, which is hindering their growth. Okay, so what we saw is that a major reason for this is because most small businesses are unable to properly keep and manage their financial data. Even when they do have some data, it is in the form of exercise books and notebooks like you see in the picture, and it's almost useless. The existing solutions are also not helping. A survey with this shows that only 2% of them are able to use the available software in the market, and it's either because it's too expensive or it's too technical and comes with no support. Moreover, the accounting firms that cater for small and medium enterprises are stuck in their cake and outmoded workflows, still charging expensive, highly rates that small businesses cannot pay. And the freelance market for accountants in our country and on the continent is highly fragmented and is bedeviled with low trust and low quality issues. So this is why we started BUILT. Our solution is a simple web and mobile application that small business owners use to interface with their customers, plus a virtual
virtual dedicated accountant who handles their accounting back office activities remotely. And this is how it works. Small business owners go onto our platform, they sign up, they set up their business, they create and send invoices to their clients, and they even receive payments on their invoices directly through the platform via mobile money payments or card payments. In addition, the virtual accountant that has been attached to them handles and files their taxes, their social security contributions, and answers any questions that they may have concerning their business and their performances. For all of these, we charge a flat monthly subscription fee, which starts from $20 per month. We are in a huge market in Africa, and we estimate it to be 16 billion in sub-Saharan Africa alone. In Ghana, my country, we are looking at half a billion. But with every good thing, there are competitors in the space for this one. So we have freelancers and small accounting firms, but they, so they provide support, but they are mainly offline based and don't have their own platform. So they lack platform power. There are also software only providers, but these are almost foreign companies and they do not have a strong focus on Africa yet. For us at Built, we have a unique space in the market, and we are looking at small and growing businesses that employ one to 20 staff, and they do have compliance needs. Moreover, they have outgrown do-it-yourself accounting systems, but they are not yet at the state where they can have accountants, or they can sustain paying accountants, or full-time CFO. So last year, we piloted our service with a combination of several third-party tools, though it was unnecessarily expensive. But with that, we were able to get, to, to get a little bit over $33,000 in revenue. And to put that in perspective, that's about 15 times the GDP per capita of my country. We also serve 122 businesses reaching 2,883 US dollars in monthly recurring revenue. But now, with our own proprietary application and a significantly lower cost of service delivery, we are targeting 1,000 businesses and 240,000 US dollars in revenue by the end of this year. In three years' time, we should have dominated Ghana, reached 9,000 businesses and made two million US dollars in revenue, as well as started operations in Nigeria, which is a bigger and larger market, but with similar demographics like Ghana. Our, product, our growth strategy is simple. Partnerships, we are partnering with business support organizations, hubs, accelerators, co-working space providers, okay, and building on their trust to get more clients and onboard them easily. We are also organizing regular small business workshops, which we are building a community around it and expanding across the country. So in the end, we have a community of small business owners, and this is going to make our referral programs very, very effective. In this pandemic, most businesses are moving online. So we are offering a free basic version of our application for them to use. Over time, we will convert them to paying clients. On the product front, what we are doing is integrating with financial service providers and statutory bodies, and this is bringing more value to our platform. All this is possible because we have a solid team. Myself and my co-founders have known each other for the past six years, and as chartered accountants, we have gathered over 15 years of experience in the accounting, tax, and finance industry. Moreover, our CTO, who is a full stack developer, has seven years of experience and he has built and scaled a school billing system in Ghana before. And for our marketing manager, he has over seven years in marketing and has worked with MTN, Ghana's biggest mobile telecommunication and fintech company. We also have an amazing team of advisors backing us. So we are raising 250,000 US dollars 
to enable us to scale our team, scale our tech infrastructure, and we find and invest in our marketing and customer acquisition efforts. If you join us, know that you are going to be in a good team because we've raised funding and funding support from institutions such as SC Ventures in Singapore. So come, let's talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edward, for that pitch. Uh, who can I give the floor to first? Actually, I'm not sure you're supposed to say floor on Zoom, but. Um, I have a question. Um, how, because you said each company uh, that signs up with you get a virtual assistant, right? So I was just wondering about the scale of uh, how many companies does one assistant or virtual assistant, how many can they handle? So how yes, big is so your team now and how big is your team going to be when you're in a thousand businesses? Yes, so currently we have three accountants and each handles about 40 businesses. The good thing is that as we get to know the work required by our clients, we automate the processes, but they don't know. So those processes are automated and they get to know. But the trust system they have is that they have someone who is responding to them. And that's a big deal breaker for us in Africa. We want to know someone handling our systems and we trust that person. So those systems are being automated and we'll get better at it over time as we get to know the routine nature of the task that our clients ask for. Are there more questions um, from someone yep. else? Aiden, Aiden? Yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. You know, it's very interesting market that you're in. I, I've done a little bit of research into the African market as well. Like you mentioned, highly fragmented, but um, my, my primary question is how, you, you've taken an idea, you know, I, I, I guess it has some beginnings of, of WAVE translated that to your localization, but what's gonna be your key defensibility and your key wins to take the Ghanaian market, and then also your next market, which is Nigeria and the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa? Yes, yeah, so um, one, if you look at the target we are offering the service to, WAVE is not able to target them well because WAVE payroll doesn't work in Ghana. And secondly, those people are above do-it-yourself applications like WAVE. So what we are offering is someone who provides that professional assistance, but it's virtual, to what they have and to a better product that is more localized than WAVE, okay? And we ourselves seen people coming to us and when they come to us for, um, they want free software. The, the biggest advantage of WAVE is free software, but we have a free basic one and that free basic one is already competing with them down there. Whilst we are targeting on those who are paying us with our virtual assistance, okay? So that's how we are targeting. The second thing is that in Africa, contacts and partnership works a lot because when it comes to finances, people are looking more at who is behind it. And then also they are looking at what has my friend used before. So we are using those partnerships a lot. And the third thing is that we are integrating with financial services providers. So it gives them more advantage to be on our platform. They get more value. For example, if you can apply for a loan to our system, you will be on that system better than a system that doesn't give you that. So all of this value addition creates and puts us in the unique space, okay? And that's what we are looking at amplifying going forward and going to Nigeria and other African countries. Okay, uh, sorry, following question on that, you know, typically for your 122 businesses, what's the average revenue you're tracking per company per month? So um, currently, um, we are tracking about 80, um, averagely should be about um, $15,000. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, that's good because. By the past year, we did about 2.2 um, million. When we check, our charge as a proportion of that is about one point something percent. It's very low. And 
you know, people are always concerned about how much they pay for accounting services in relation to the income they are getting. And that's why we start from $20 per month. And surprisingly, even the $20 per month, most of those who are on the lower bit are not giving us tax to do. They are just using the platform. But that idea that there is someone they can always talk to, okay, makes them pay. And those who are paying higher, for example, people paying $500 per month are those who are giving us the task. So we kind of get many people at the bottom who are not really giving us tasks to do because the system is handling all that, but they are still paying. And then those are the higher um, stream of, of $500 are those that we are dedicating more time to. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Edward, for uh, that pitch. Uh, we now got to the part where everybody can chip in for the Q&A. Uh, however, because we started quite late, uh, I first wanna um, do a few announcements. Uh, so I have that out of the way so that people then after, if they really need to leave at 6.30, um, you, you don't need to stay, stay on board. Um, give me a few seconds, same problem as everybody else. Um, oh, sorry, I should have skipped to the end <laughs> up front, of course. Um, so we will continue the Q&A till about seven o'clock if there's enough questions and if people are interested. Uh, we have quite a lot of uh, questions through the chat and through the Q&A. Just keep sending, sending them. Uh, Sakshi and Sharvri are collecting them and we'll ask them one by one, uh, mixed up with the pitch coaches if they're able to stay. Um, what I wanna plug for ourselves. So we have more events coming up. As uh, you're all aware, everybody is in, I think everybody who's on the call is probably also in lockdown. And a lot of the founders on the startup uh, body are single founders. Uh, which means that they're basically stuck all week by themselves, uh, maybe social contact with their kids, and that's about it. Uh, we have decided to start Friday drinks and games again, as we were used to until a few weeks ago. Uh, you can join that by uh, invite. So it's very simple. If you're a member on the Startup Buddy, uh, you will get an email about it. Uh, it's not going to be about work. Uh, it's going to be a social event. The only obligation that you have is to bring your own drink or your own snack. So we'll start with that next week. Um, secondly, uh, we already have new companies for the next demo day. We haven't actually scheduled the next demo day yet, but if you're interested to join the demo day as a pitching company, uh, you can already let us know uh, as of now. And if you wanna attend, uh, just keep track of our website, the newsletter, social media, etc. And then finally, uh, otherwise I'm gonna forget maybe at the end, I really upfront already want to thank everybody, especially all the founders that were just pitching. Uh, I think for all of you, it was the first time that you had to pitch in this fashion. So I can imagine it was pretty hard. Secondly, of course, I really want to thank the pitch coaches, uh, Kenrick, Ina, Anirudh, uh, Suleiman, and uh, Aiden. Thank you very much for making the time to do this. I will ask you in a minute to give a little bit of feedback about all the pitches that you just heard. Um, thank you to the attendees. Uh, I'm really happy that almost everybody has joined and stayed all the way till the end. So I assume that is a measure of quality for us. And finally, of course, my own team, uh, Sharvri, Darvis and uh, Sakshi for organizing this. It maybe doesn't sound as a lot of work doing a webinar, but we actually worked very hard for the past few weeks. Um, so thank you all for that. So with that, I wanna give the floor to Shervery and she uh, will first go into a few questions that came from the attendees. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, so we've had quite a few questions come in from the audience. Uh, it's great to know that. Um, so the first few questions are for Jasper. Um, so one of the questions is, what is the use of the proceeds for both the bridge and series A funding? Um, so Jasper, could you please answer that for our audience? Sorry, what is the use of the proceeds? Yes, what is the use of the proceeds for both the ah, bridge ah, well, and series A funding? Yeah. Ah, right, 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 right. 
Um, so a large part of what we, we are doing at the moment is partner development and partner integration. So basically our goal is to get as deeply embedded uh, with, with our partners as possible, which will require you know, ongoing, ongoing development and so some further customizations uh, for some partners. Um, so, so that's a big focus for us because we want to, we're basically building our fortress, so that's gonna be required. And the other thing is also, of course, that launching the, the offline side of the integration will also take up funding. So, so the offline launch and product development will be the main things. Whereas marketing will be less of a factor at this point because we're getting that through our partners. Thank you for that. Um, the same person, Stephanie, has another question for you, Jasper. Uh, what is the key differentiating factor or your unique selling point um, versus, for Rebate Mango versus companies like Shopback, for example? Yeah, so uh, Shopback is, I mean, we're basically competing with them solely in the B2C cashback space. So the, the main differentiating factor and what really sets us apart is, of course, that we are offering a selection of rewards as opposed to purely cashback. Now, this has ramifications that go beyond just the fact that you have a drop down menu, because it means that we're able, for instance, to work with airlines um, who are interested in promoting us to their many frequent flying members because they want to sell as many miles as possible. And therefore, we can work with airlines in ways that wouldn't be possible in any way for Shopback. It also means that we can we can have a B2B angle because we are integrating with these other currencies, and therefore we can be on platforms like Asia's app or uh, you know Singapore Airlines app and so on, because we have this sort of added reward system uh, which they do not have. So it, it gives us a lot of of opportunities that that they are lacking, and that's very much what sets us apart. Okay, thank you for that uh, answer, Jasper. I think the other question is quite similar from uh, Abdul. So he's asking um, who your main competitors are, and you already mentioned Shopback is one of them. Is there anyone else that you would like to discuss? No, I mean, for, for there are only two, if you're looking at B2C regional cashback in, in Asia or Southeast Asia, there's only us and Shopback. Uh, for the other market, if we're looking at B2B integration, there's not really anybody big in the market yet. Uh, Europe and the US would have companies like Collinson Group who are not here yet, but who for us is basically also a potential acquirer. But they're not really competing in this market yet, so, which is why there's like some, uh, a, a very nice window for us to jump through right now, but obviously it won't last forever. Okay. Um, so the next question was actually coming back to Kendrick's question for Sylvester uh, from Talentora. So Kendrick had asked, um, he, he was kind of suggesting that um, Sylvester is kind of under undercharging for uh, his services. So Sylvester mentioned that he's charging about $12 subscription per year. Um, so Sylvester, would you like to answer that question? Hi, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so sorry that uh, it was muted. So uh, just like to show, uh, I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah. Okay, so we, uh, our, our app is a volume-based play. So what that means is that uh, we, we're trying to get conversion to paid subscribers. So if they don't pay, they get to use the free version, but they don't have the, uh, the, the uh, paid features on that. So the reason why we keep it low, uh, which is $12 for the talent and talent seeker, is that there's better conversion. So we can always increase the, uh, the fee later on, but we will try with $12 to see whether we can get great conversion uh, because we are trying to acquire hundreds of thousands to millions of users. And with that fee, I think uh, we can get good conversion as well as maintain the platform and get good revenues from there. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvester. Um, so the next question is for Timothy from Stephanie again. So Timothy, um, the question from Stephanie is, how reliable are the hires uh, for simple jobs? And what if they disappoint? Would this be a backlash on the platform? So uh, yeah, I was typing the question halfway. <laughs> I was typing the answer halfway. So yeah. what we do have right now is that we are going to introduce an interview process, uh, a process where it's a, a screening process, which is basically a simple interview and also uh, opportunity for us to explain uh, our expectations we have on jobbers. There's also a few metrics that we have on, on the platform. Uh, a hard system basically is like playing a, playing a game, they lose lives for unprofessional conduct. 
and also uh, a rating system that uh, they can get from uh, previous hires. So, but at the end of the day, it is up to the hirer to choose who they want to engage. Uh, and it is a relationship between a hirer and a jobber. So we will be trying to, we will want, sorry, we want to try to introduce other features such as uh, grab immediately. So the current philosophy is that you have a few days of lead time. Uh, what happens if there is no lead time, you need someone there immediately. So we are trying to introduce a feature where we can um, help you get someone immediately as well to replace people who don't show up. So yes, there might be a little bit of difficulty when you do not get the people you want. Uh, but we are putting in uh, measures to mitigate that process compared to the traditional way of engaging people. You don't have that process in place and simple jobs is the one that helps you reduce or mitigate such issues. Okay. Thank you, Timothy. Um, the remaining questions are actually for Robin. Um, so, so the questions about the startup buddy, um, before we actually step, into that, uh, maybe I'd like to uh, give the floor to uh, the panelists to actually give feedback on the pitches we had today. And then Robin, we can come back to the questions that were asked about the startup buddy itself. Yeah, I, ju so, I, I, ju I just want to ask one question myself. I, I know I already yeah, sure. got to ask a lot of questions. Uh, but Edward, you mentioned in your pitch uh, that you're currently funded by uh, SC Ventures here in Singapore. Uh, I'm just curious, can you share a little bit how that came about and uh, how does that help you? And other than that, like, is there any connection between what you're currently doing for your business in Africa and uh, having an investor here in Asia? Yeah, so um, Built was selected as the winner of the lead 2030 challenge for SDG9, which was organized by the One Young World, of which I'm an ambassador. But, so I was selected as the winner for the SDG9 um, for that challenge, and it was supported by Standard Chartered Bank. So we had to get funding of $50,000 from SC Ventures, and currently two of their venture capitalists are on our advisory team. The main interesting thing for them now is if we are able to become the gatekeepers of financial data of businesses then it gives us doors to offer them other financial services such as how can we use their data to really understand their cash flow and give them credit okay how can we use their data to then open up other financial services for them so this is basically some of the other and values that can be added on our platform, just starting from keeping the data, okay? And um, we are still working with them and they do have advices on our board as well. Okay, thank you, Edward. Uh, do we have any other questions uh, from the panelists that we didn't have time for? Okay, um, if that is all, then I'd like to invite each of the panelists one by one to uh, give their feedback. Um, we can start with uh, Ine. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna give some general feedback um, because I think it'll take too long if I go pitch by pitch, but there were some similarities, I think. So I think all of you, except for the last pitch, that was Edward, failed to mention competitors in your pitch slide. So I think that's a huge thing to include in your pitch. Um, you know, maybe there's not a competitor that is doing exactly what you're doing, but there's always someone competing. Maybe it's just status quo. If it's status quo, then that's also important to include because it helps us understand what the problem that you're solving and how that you're solving it better than anybody else. Um, so that's the main thing. I think a lot of the slides were also a little bit wordy. So remember, we you want us to listen to you um, and not spend time reading your slides. So that's also something to be conscious of. Um, 
we have this rule that we tell our um, startups because we help them create pitch decks as well, right? Um, the header of the slide should always tell the story and then everything underneath should just build up on that header. So just make sure that investors would probably only have time to actually read the header and maybe look at some of the graphics or pictures and then that's it because that you want them to listen to the words that you're saying so cut back on the on the words um yeah i think and then also again the problem statement none of you had really a very clear problem statement i like to see a problem statement that relates to the business um to how you're actually going to have revenue. So if the problem is uh, for, let's just see, oh, I can't think of an exact example right now, but make sure that the problem that you're stating early on is the problem that people want to pay to have solved. So that's kind of some general feedback for all of you. So Thank you, Ine. Um, so next, I'd like to ask uh, Suleiman uh, what his feedback has been for the pitches today. Yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to mention what Ina was just saying because they are all spot on for sure. I will just add a couple of comments from my side. It would have been quite typically we we see a lot of pitches that try to assess the the you know the market size that. In the total addressable market, and then they uh, they lose touch with how are they going to address the market. Um, so this is again general feedback, but a lot of the pitches did that. You assess the market; it might be correct, it might not be correct. This is debatable, and of course there are different sources. But always try to include a way, um, um, a roadmap on how this specific round that you are raising is going to help you capture what amount of the market. Uh, quantify that if you can with uh, a CAC trajectory and a customer acquisition cost. Try to put something in place that shows, you know, I'm going to capture so and so amount of the market in the next 12 to 18 months if you invest in me. And uh, yeah, try to, try to connect that clearly to a unit economics kind of slide as well. I mean, I, I haven't seen that um, in in most of the pitches, and this is important as well. We at the end of the day, you know, you are asking for funding, it would help a lot to know what are you going to use that funding for. And uh, preferably with numbers, preferably all coherent with the total addressable market. Um, and that would be my, my top point, my top feedback. Sure, I completely agree with that. Um, so, Suleiman, thank you for your feedback. Um, I would next like to ask, um, Aiden, uh, what he has to say. I'm sure he has quite a bit to say. <laughs> um, thanks. I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, but really, you know, I reiterate on the two things. With your pitch, you only have a chance for five minutes. Uh, the pitch has to be very good to leave that impression so that we want to have that follow on together with you. Leave, leave that memorable part of it. We, if we were going to read through your pitch stack, then we wouldn't need to listen to you speak. Um, in that sense. So keep it short and succinct. I think there were some really good examples of some pitch decks over there. Um, again, what's that unique differentiator that wants me to get that second meeting together to know more about you? You know, uh, and I'm just gonna run through the five businesses very, very quickly on a one pointer that I think would be very unique, you know, like for Rebate Mango, the, the B2B integration side is your unique value proposition story. And I think you could double down and talk about that uh, for Talentora and Sylvester, you're building a double-sided marketplace um, and uh, there's a real problem to solve again. I, and I see from B2B perspective, uh, but that's where most of the casting calls are coming from as well. So try and solve and address that. Uh, for Let It Wag, you know, talk about how you're building the community. It, it is a bit uh, more of a social play over there, but you want to double down on that. And that's going to be your growth. Um, talk more on that then it leads on to the rest of the e-commerce rather than talking about the e-commerce right now without growing that base. Uh, for simple jobs, um, I, I did talk about, you know, fast jobs being a competitor, but again, you're incubated uh, by Lapoli. You've got a great access to market. That could be your super key differentiator and you're on gamification. Maybe there's a whole story to tell focus around students. And, you know, for bill accounting, um, you're, you're providing services, your SE back, um, it's something that everybody needs. And that's why I asked that question over there. 
how much are they how much are you tracking per month how much are they actually paying for this it makes very good sense uh, on unit economic side of things um, that allows you to then scale make your value proposition super strong inside and you don't have to tell your secret sauce of automation to everyone um, so that's that's just my, my little bit of individualized feedback per person thank you for the pitch specific feedback i think that's uh, super helpful um and and uh, yeah i mean i think the feedback so far has been pretty good um yeah, I would like to actually uh, ask um, Kendrick and Anirudh as well for their feedback. And uh, it would be even better if um, you're specific to the founder, because uh, every pitch today has been quite different. Uh, the industry is different. The stage of the company is different. The geography where they're coming from is very different. So um, I I'd like to ask uh, Kendrick to uh, pitch in as well. OK. Um, yeah, I, I agree full heartedly with uh, the thing that like all the other feedback was. One thing I think that was missing across all of them as well and something I, I personally quite like to see is like, why do you like we're, we're investing here at the seed level, right? And this is pre revenue or like pre product or some, some MVP is in place. But basically what we need to rely on is kind of your unique uh, insights or expertise into a certain vertical. Um, and really highlight why you have that unique point of view and why do you think that you have the solution for this um, like we're not experts in every single industry right so as I like mentioned before like I don't know job tech very well um, but like then when you start like I want to know like am I listening to somebody who's very credible in their uh, in their field or in the in the product that they're pitching um, and if you start off on that foot I feel like you have kind of the advantage you have already have a leg up um, rather than just going straight into the product or the problem statement of the market that you're addressing. And then, then it's like, why are you telling me this? Like, this is kind of general information, but like, why do you have that unique point of view? I think that was... You mean, you mean the founder's story, like why the founder yeah. is doing what they're doing? Yeah, so like you've, you've worked for 10 years in, in recruitment uh, through these verticals and you notice X, Y, and Z, and that's why you want to do uh, this particular solution. So that was yeah. one. And then like from that, like something that I thought was missing from most as well is like, how is your product uniquely defensible versus the others, right? So it kind of comes together with like that the competitor uh, analysis was missing. So why do you uh, stand out? What's your, at least in the beginning, like over time, nobody can build like a unique moat, right? But at least for say the next year or two years, you have something so unique that others will not be able to catch up on. And that's what's gonna propel you to be successful. I think those two things would be great to include. Yeah, yeah and just I in agree. addition to Just in yeah. addition to Kendrick's point, I think it's important to paint a macro picture in the start because I think we as venture capitalists or investors don't understand every industry in and out. So it's good if you can give a reference to what's happening in the industry in general and why the space is hot in general. That sets the, that sets a good context in the start of our conversation, and then you can probably jump on what's the problem and what's the solution that you guys offer. That is one. And another important point could be uh, like most of the people can include like a slide where they can talk about uh, where is the money being spent, what's the spent plan, and what key milestones do they expect to hit from the money that they're planning to raise, because that helps the investor understand where his money is going and what his uh, money is being utilized for. I think that can help uh, like uh, build a long-term relationship with the investor. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, especially for deep tech startups, defensibility and uniqueness is something you definitely look for. Um, and, and I think that's something that, um, you know, if you're in a space where there have been a lot of co companies who've done something like you've done before, that's something you really need to highlight uh, against the background of your competitors. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, both Kendrick and Anirudh there. Um, so if that is all, I don't see any more questions coming in from the audience. Uh, if you don't mind, sorry, I just want to add one sure. more point. Uh, from the yeah, experience sure. that we see a lot of pitches coming online right now, um, a, a nice personalization is always a good thing. Know who you're pitching to. Um, but also we see a lot of people talking about COVID. Um, over here, you've talked about COVID as a, a consequence when the question comes up. 
But what we like to see is the resilience and the adaptability in founders to take up the challenge and say, this is how we're tackling COVID. This is what we're doing. Sure, revenue may take a hit, but this is this is how we're, we're staying afloat or these are the opportunities in the market. I think it, it opens a, a good um, insight into proactiveness of the founder and, and helps tell more of a story for you guys as well. Yeah, I mean, taking in the situation in the market is, I mean, as it comes, is one of the biggest qualities you need as a founder to um, pitch not just to your customers, but even to your investors. Uh, it, it's a very volatile market right now. So um, I completely agree with your point, Aiden. And I just, I'd like to add another thing as well. Sure. Um, when you're doing it on Zoom or anything like this, um, make sure that you, we can also see your face. Because, I mean, usually you pitch in a meeting, right, face to face, and it doesn't, it makes it a lot more difficult when it's online and you have trouble, you know, and things can go wrong. But I would generally um, recommend to try and sit somewhere where you can actually um, show your face on video while you pitch because it helps us relate. And, um, and it depends on the investor, but most investors do like to do like the face-to-face -face meeting. So this is as close as you can get, right, with the camera. Yeah, it's, it's a very people-oriented process. And uh, a lot of it has to do with getting to know the founder uh, and not just the business. Uh, so, so that's exactly the conversation I've been having with some of the founders today. Um, some of them actually had trouble getting their video started. Um, but, but that's something that always tends to happen. So it's good to have your slides backed up in a PDF format. Um, all of these different factors come into play, especially on a video call where uh, it's a very technical environment. Yeah. OK. Um, I think we're through uh, the questions that came in. Um, so we're going to wrap up uh, the program for today. Again, thank you everybody uh, very much for uh, joining. Uh, virtually everybody also of the attendees is still here. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. And uh, guys, actually next time I really hope to have a few ladies pitch as well. <laughs> but guys, thanks for your pitching. Um, I also learned quite a bit from the feedback. I have uh, done one hour sessions with everybody who was pitching and a few remarks in the feedback weren't in there. So I'm going to improve on that. For everybody who was here today and joining, uh, also let my team and myself know what we can improve on these online demo days. This was the first one. Um, I hope you liked it, so please come back. And I think with that, we're gonna close it off. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody. So for the questions for Robin, uh, we will contact you separately. Thank you. Oh, just send me an email to Robin at the thank start you, of my outcome. <laughs> yeah, that was true, yeah. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.